Thanks for tuning in to another edition. Actually, what is this edition? Have we come up with a name yet? I know what the channel is. Actually, we have two channels to choose from. And you might be wondering, well, why why is the long version and the early version this week, even though we're posting it on Wednesday instead of Tuesday, why is that on Prime Sports Network? Well, you might have also uh, noticed that Eric was not available last week uh, for the IndyCar uh, coverage. So um, Eric, uh, and I'm not, I don't want to speak for Eric. I'm assuming that um, he has just, uh, again, I, I don't want to, I don't want to guess, but he has just too much is on his plate. Let's just put it that way. And so hopefully we'll have Eric to talk about IndyCar soon. But what we're doing is, is because of that, I want to uh, make sure that we are capitalizing as best we can on traffic. So this week we're posting back on our Prime Sports Network early in the week. And then we're going to do our race day edition on mystery caution. So we're just going to switch it up this week until we kind of decide exactly what we're going to do moving forward. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll have Eric on board uh, real soon. But we're just trying some new things. That's all. Nothing major. Uh, but this week's race, this is a beauty. It's the Food City 500 from Bristol. There's no more dirt. Oh, thank goodness for that. I can't believe it. If I could, I'd jerk off right now, but I just can't. Anyway, the fact is, this is one of the best races of the year. I know with the new car, it hasn't exactly been like old Bristol. So, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we've had you know some interesting things happen already this season. Every, se every season is new. You never know how things are going to you know go. And we saw that last week when Toyota did really well at Phoenix. And that's not normal. Um, and Christopher Bell, who uh, couldn't last a few laps in his championship uh, uh, race in November, uh, wound up. Look, he had a very fast car. And uh, not just the, uh, during the race, really. It, it was most of the week. You know, it's one of those things where uh, you can pick these things up when you're at the track. And I, I think Bell was probably one of the buzz drivers uh, b even before the race, which is why I believe his odds uh, in, in actually started off at 10 to 1, which I said last week they shouldn't have been. But, you know, hey, they're there. They know this stuff more than I do. And for me, I, I, I go by historical trends, and I'm not going to change that until something changes. And it just did. So now we can start saying, well, maybe Toyota's got something going on here now, especially at, you know, a one mile racetrack. Um, and they better because if they want to win a championship. That's what it's all about. They had to catch up to Ford and Chevy and it, they apparently have done that. So good for them. And hey, good for me. Since Christopher Bell is my pick to win the championship. Uh, speaking of that, I want to update everybody on the futures because uh, we haven't really had too much time to talk about that. And look, this is about making some money. And so I'm going to try to do the very best I can to make you guys money. So let's pop that up here. Uh, these are the current futures. Now, uh, right, look, Bell is, even though he's 8 to 1 now, I would still take him now because of the fact that if he were to have a really good season, like now, like this is the beginning of his good season. Like maybe he has a William Byron type season this year. That eight to one is not getting any better. And since I picked him to win the championship, that's what I think is going to happen now that he's got his win that I didn't think he was going to get. So, um, and and I feel, and this is even a better reason to take Bell because of the fact that if he can get back to the final four again this year, he just won this race. So I think my recommendation is take Christopher Bell right now. Uh, he's, you're going to get between eight, and nine to one at your, uh, at your sports book. I would also definitely take Ryan Blaney. I mean, what is my boy doing here at 11 to one? Has anybody noticed the defending cup series champion is leading in the points and he's still 11 to one. All you have to do is switch this name to chase Elliott. This guy over here, switch the names and Ryan Blaney might be the favorite right now. Or at least tied with Kyle Larson to win the championship at about what five to one with William Byron. It, it, it look fine. You don't want to give Ryan Blaney any respect. We will cash in for it. So that's what I would do right now. I don't think taking a look. I wouldn't go with anybody else. I mean, maybe Reddick. Yeah, I do some Reddick. Reddick's at sixteen to one. Uh, he's somebody that I think has an outside shot 
only because of the fact I think there are several other younger drivers that are better than him. Um, but you are getting 16 to 1. So I'd go with Reddick. I would go with Blaney. And I would go with Bell. So go ahead. Uh, that's my advice to try to make some money on the futures. Um, oh, in uh, fantasy this week, um, and we had one of our viewers that brought it up when we were doing our, I don't know if it was the first show, I, I believe, of the season on this on, on Mystery Caution. And I said, uh, and I was talking about the fantasy team, and, and his point was, well, you shouldn't bring that kind of stuff up because nobody cares about your fantasy team. And I mentioned, well, the reason I bring up the fantasy team uh, is just so people know who I like and who we all like. That's the reason we talk about it. And so uh, I want to talk about it in this show uh, just quickly because I made a change in my fantasy team. I ditched Austin Dillon for uh, a driver that I'm going to make an introduction to on our trends this week for the first time, and that is Noah Gregson. So uh, I went ahead and did that. And that's kind of a combination to the fact that I, I just I just got a bad feeling about Austin Dillon. I thought at this stage of his career, teaming up with Kyle, that he would finally kind of get it. And he's usually good for a win every year or two. And at the bottom, and, and when we're playing games like fantasy, that's what you're looking for. That's all you're looking for. But just my point is, is that I think, I, look, I, I really have been impressed so far what I've seen from Gregson this year. I'm a big, uh, Gre- well, I'm a, I'm a big, but I, well, I was a big Gregson uh, Xfinity fan. And so I'm still kind of a big fan, but nowhere near, of course, uh, uh, Blaney or Kyle Busch. But I like Gregson. He'll grow on me if he uh, if he ends up uh, being successful, of course. Um, but I do like him. He's, he's probably in my top five right now. Uh, last year was a disaster, but he's already, uh, especially on the team he's on, he, he's, he's kind of front and center. I mean, everybody's looking on that team to to, uh, to to try to find a, a, you know which driver is going to take over, and it's wide open, and that's and, and because it's wide open, it's like okay, well, well, why not Noah? I mean, why can't Noah Gregson be the you know the main driver uh, for Stuart Haas? Uh, now Chase Briscoe is starting to take advantage of that, so I look at those two drivers, and we'll talk about them both this week. I think those two drivers are really good sleepers right now for this season. Briscoe's already starting to look like the driver we saw a couple of years ago. And Gregson's looking like the driver we saw a couple of years ago. So like the fact, and by the way, Berry and Priest, not seeing anything from those two. So I think they're going to both be in for long seasons. But Gregson and Prisco, when, you're, when, when, when there's no more big name attached to Stuart Haas Racing, all of that, any, anything that you have now, as far as quality crew chief, quality this, engineer, quality that, that's going to go to, I, in my opinion, these two. Now, maybe Barry gets a piece of it because uh, they do like him, no question. But I think Gregson and Briscoe, I think they're more talented than Josh Barry. And I think they're going to take advantage of it on, this, uh, on, on Stuart Haas. And so I'm looking at those two. Uh, right now, I don't want to see those weekly uh, odds drop very much because uh, they're both still around 60s. But they're going to, uh, unless they go to tracks that they have absolutely no positive history at, I'm always going to try to uh, make some long shot money on them at this point, as long as they continue to race the way that they have at least started out. So, anyway, just wanted to. Oh, by the way, and the one other driver that I would have dropped, I would have, I would have still dropped Dylan for, for this driver had it not be uh, for Gregson was uh, Carson Hosevar. So uh, I'm very impressed uh, to see Hosevar. Now, look, I know he hasn't had some top 10s like Gregson, but Hosevar uh, has uh, had, what, a couple of 15-place finishes. Uh, he's been qualifying pretty well. He's been hanging around early in races. So, look, he doesn't have the, the, the Stuart Haas racing team uh, over there on Spire, but... Um, and look, Corey LaJoy has shown a little bit, as we know, and Zane Smith's got talent. Spire might be a very nice kind of long, long, long shot group to, to pay attention to. Maybe they steal a win this year. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. But I think Carson Hosevar is someone that, yeah, you know what? I know he doesn't have a lot of experience outside truck, but he certainly is off to a nice start. And he's driving a Chevy, and that always can be an advantage. Okay. So let's get right to it. Again, this is cup price number five at the Food City 500. And we're going to go ahead with track trend number one. And that is talking about the track itself. And Bristol, uh, again, no dirt. Thank goodness for that. 
we've got a concrete track for uh, both races so i am just uh, stoked now uh, you, you got to keep in mind there's only two other short tracks martinsville and richmond but what's also important when you're handicapping the race keep an eye on dover because dover is also concrete and dover's a mile anyway so it's not like it's a, a you know a big racetrack pretty close to bristol so dover is important because of the concrete similarities and you've got the other two short tracks martinsville and richmond and then track trend number two we only have two this week six of the last nine winners have started in the top five with three pole sitters it's a short track so that is not a big surprise and look at that 95 percent of the all-time winners at bristol motor speedway have started in the top 20 so you do not want you know what's interesting chris busher won last year at 20 um but actually was that last year just want to double check this i know it was what was it when did he win at 20 no that was two years ago oh and this is also important okay don't forget because of the fact that there is no more dirt we're only looking at three races okay all the september the, the three september races so of course that means we've only had three races at bristol with the new car that's it and do you know who won a toyota driver a ford driver and a chevy driver so how about that that makes things i think fun interesting better more wide open and yes busher it wasn't 2022 when he started 20th larson started fifth and hamlin started second those are the three since the new car farthest back a winner has started was back was way back in 38th do you know who that was it was back in 2001 i'll give you a couple of seconds to guess who that was that was elliot sadler okay now as far as the manufacturer now here's a big surprise and i think you should take advantage of this and that is the fact that toyota's plus 120 chevy's plus 160 and ford is plus 280. now look i get it i know that uh as usual you know ford seems to be a little bit behind i get it first of all you got ryan blaney in that group okay but you also have joey logano and i know he's been struggling but logano can race at bristol we'll get into that later um and i just mentioned gregson and briscoe okay uh yeah and then you have the, the other big two kozlowski and busher so you've got a 2022 champ you have a driver Kozlowski, who I like a lot this week. You've got Blaney. You have Logano. Uh, and then you have several long shots that I think could be dangerous this week. McDowell, uh, Gregson, Briscoe, and Sindrick. And I'm going to get 3-1 to one compared to Toyota and Chevy. I think Ford should be more like 2-1. to one. So because of the plus 280, I think this isn't a bad one. If you go that route. I mean, I don't. But if you go that route, uh, you might want to take a look at it. Okay let's go driver to driver and yes aj Almendinger is back so uh, uh should we start at aj since we do alphabetical order no you know why because he's pretty bad here so uh he only has two he only has two top tens and 23 appearances so um we're gonna skip aj instead we're gonna go and start with last week's winner christopher bell now we have three drivers who are at the top. Matter of fact, uh, let me show you the odds uh, quickly so you get an idea of what we're dealing with here. Here are the odds. You got those three top at the top, Larson, Hamlin, and Bell, and then a big gap. And then you have Byron, Blaney, and the rest. Uh, Bush has come down. He was 16 to one yesterday. Not sure why um, with his history. Well, it's probably because of the way he's been racing. Look at Logano at 18 to 1. Just Elliott and Truex are 20 to 1. Uh, Jones was 50 to 1 yesterday. And by the way, I'm going with yesterday's odds uh, because I was supposed to do the show yesterday and I'm not going to change everything, just over a few bucks. So there you go. Those are the odds. And uh, of course, those are the big ones. Okay, so let's now go back to Bell. And Bell is one of the three at the top. Uh, look, I'm not going to. Uh, I, I I can see if somebody wanted to go, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take all three of the top drivers. And here, what's, uh, I'm going to give for instance. 
Because the, the more money, the better. So let's say you put $1,000 down on all three. That's 3000 you're investing. Well, if Kyle Larson wins, that, that'll be a payoff of 4500 bucks or 5000 Okay. And or four thousand even. Let's just say that. So what that what does that mean? That means you're what? You are now uh, gaining one thousand dollars. If Bell or Hamlin were to win, you're gaining two thousand dollars. So it's simple as that. If you want to go that route, but it's a dangerous way to do it because you're all in on the top three. One of them better win because if they don't, that's a high risk wager. Whether it's a hundred bucks each or a thousand, you get my point. Fact is, it's a high risk wager, but that's what they're doing here. They're saying, "All right, you want to go after these three? You're gonna to have to pay for it." And you know my my way of doing things. I just can't do that. So I only have one driver this week out of the three. Bell is not it. Why? Winning back to back. I I can't imagine he's ever done it. I'm sure he hasn't. It's very difficult to do. Uh, but this is a racetrack that he is uh, destined to win at least once, if not more than that, in his career. So you you would you understand why he's five to one. Look at last year; he was excellent here. Uh, in the first race last year, he was on the pole at 187 laps, and then fourth in uh, not last year. Uh, well, yes, last year in no in uh, September, and then. Uh, in 2022, he led 143 laps and finished fourth. Uh, also, Bell has a runner-up and a win in four Xfinity Series races. So he's proven he could do it in the Xfinity Series. He's proving he could do it in the Cup Series. And Dover, last year he was sixth. And he was also uh, fourth in one of the two Richmond races. Didn't do much at Martinsville. So all in all, I like Bell. But I just, the thing that is going to make me, uh, you know, I'm going to find that wart. I'm going to find the excuse to not go down with that five to one number. It's winning back to back races. Okay. We'll get into those other uh, short numbers when we, when they pop up with Hamlin first. Now let's go with Blaney, the points leader. Look at the big difference here. Every other driver, you are getting at least double the money. And that is the direction that we want to take. Of course, why, why wouldn't we? Well, Ryan Blaney, 11 to one. He's hasn't shown much lately here, even though he was okay the first year of the new car. But it, it generally he gets in trouble at the track, and I think that some of that was was inexperience, uh, patience issues, things of that nature. Now he's a champion. He's the points leader. I think this is a good year to take him again. Because, again, 11 to 1, you're getting double the price. And he proved at the Xfinity Series that he could do it here at this track. He had a nice run earlier in his career. I think there was a stretch of three or four races where he was really right there. Might have even had the best car for a year or two here. So he's shown that he can, just like Bell, he's going to win here. No doubt in my mind. Um, and who knows, maybe this is a good opportunity for him now, like I said, the whole patience deal. Maybe this is a good opportunity for him to kind of turn things around after those last two starts. Look, I don't, I'm don't. i not saying that he should be a favorite because he shouldn't, uh, but you are getting 11-1, to 1, and he has had good experience here before, and I think that definitely uh, should mean something. He was also third at Dover last year, and by the way, don't forget the big, massive win he had at Martinsville to catapult him into Phoenix and win the championship. Let's go now to Bowman at 45 to one. That does not look very good at all. And because of that, yeah, um, you know, he's at the point right now, Bowman, where he's going to need to start getting some consistency going in the top five. I know he's never been a very consistent driver, um, but he better be. I mean, uh, I tell you what, if he doesn't have a really good year this year, I just wonder about his career at Hendrick. I really do. I mean, maybe he's a lifer. I don't know. Uh, maybe he's just a guy that they're just going to go all in on him and they, they have no intention of giving up on him. But, you know, he, he's, he's got work to do. He really does. Uh, and uh, this is not the track to get it done. He's had a couple of accomplishments here, as you can see. But overall, you know, matter of fact, uh, Bowman, in all of those races, what is it, 13 races, he has never led a lap. 
in the Cup Series at Bristol. Now let's go with one of those long shots, uh, Chase Briscoe. And we, we kind of mentioned it last week that, because uh, remember, his odds were a little bit too low for my taking. He did end up in the top 10, which was nice. And that's what you needed to see. So now that he has two top 10s to start the season, we're now kind of bought in that Chase Briscoe might be ready to have the year we thought he was going to have last year. Because remember, a couple of years ago, it wasn't like he had a great year. But he kind of showed you enough that it looked like, oh, this kid's starting to learn. Watch out in 2023. So we know what happened last year. Now I think this is the year that might be uh, the year for him to kind of uh, put up uh, and uh, shut us up. Any of the doubters. Look, he hasn't had a great history here. A couple top 15s, nothing wrong with that. But he's never led a lap here as well. That's not all that great. What I will point out, though, is what you see there in the last four Xfinity Series races at this track. That's as good as it gets. He also uh, was uh, overall, if you look at it, at Martinsville, out of the two short track races, that was his best one. He had top fives last year. And you know how bad he was last year. Last year he had top fives at Martinsville. So I think he's definitely worth a couple of bucks as a long shot. Next up is 22 champ, Chris Buescher. Now, the odds are a little bit too low for me. Even though he won, um, I, I would have preferred Buescher to be a little bit more like 13 to 1, like a few of these other drivers that we'll get to. Uh, but whatever. Uh, fact is, he, he's won here. Um, and most of that has, which is kind of his MO, most of it has come lately. Sort of like Chastain, you know, Buescher... Uh, didn't have all those great results into the last couple of seasons. So that's the reason why you're seeing that again here. Um, here's my issue, and that is there's a lot of drivers that can win this this race on Sunday. Is Chris Buescher going to win two out of three on concrete? I tend to doubt that. He did lead 169 laps in his win in 2022, but that was pretty much it. He's ne He only led one other lap in his history at this racetrack. Let's go to Kyle Busch. Now, Kyle, uh, again, as I said, his numbers have dropped uh, from 16 to 1. Now they're 13 and maybe even 12. Uh, and that's because I think some uh, gamblers probably saw the 16. And they were free. Oh, wow. I'm taking advantage of that. Um, and I can understand it. Uh, look at the career. The career is just phenomenal. Eight wins out of 34. That's amazing. He's led over almost 2,600 laps in his career at Bristol. But here's the problem. They've struggled the last few weeks. And with the new car, he has not led a lap at Bristol. Okay? Look at those results with the new car. That's not going away. It's important. Very important. Of course, we've gotten past the drafting. So far, no good for Kyle. He needs some positive momentum first before I'm going to go take him. Now, look, I don't blame those guys for taking him at 16-1, to 1, but now he's back down with the rest of the crew at 12 or 13 to 1. I just can't take Kyle this week. William Byron, 11 to 1. Now, uh, he, here's a, a price that... Now, look, Byron's one of those drivers that even at this point, you still don't know what you're going to get each week. Are you going to get him at 6 to 1, 8 to 1? Is Are you going to get a bargain at 12 to 1? I'm not sure he's, he's a 14 to 1 driver anymore. But 11 to 1 is about average. Problem I have is... is Look, even though, as you can see, most of the good uh, results he've had, he's had at Bristol has been lately. And that's a positive sign, including two top fives. That's what you're looking for. All right, great, all that. But I think the biggest issue I have with Byron, besides him being at 11 to 1, he's never led a lap in the Cub Series at Bristol. Okay, I just, now I'm not saying that, he's, that these drivers, that, like I've said, that have never led a lap, I'm not saying that they can't go and, win, and lead laps. On Sunday, maybe that's the beginning of them leading laps and all that. But I, I see, once again, we're talking about percentages. We're talking about trends and all that other stuff. And I, I just don't think the percentages are good to go with a driver that will be at a track for his 10th time and go from never leading a lap to winning a race. Now, he could also do that by leading 35 laps and maybe he gets out at the right time with caution and he's been a top five car all day and he catches a break. That can definitely happen. We've seen it happen many times in the Cup Series. But do you want to risk that at 11-1 when you have a few other drivers that you can risk with? Um, 
I think he's not a bad gamble. Don't don't don't. don't I'm not not saying that, especially if you with, with the way he's played, he's driven at this track with uh, the new car. Um, it's just that there are other options I would prefer to go with. Ross Chastain is not one of them, but you are getting 18 to 1. So you're getting a much better uh, line from uh, Chastain. The problem is, is you look at the reason. I mean, it's pretty obvious. I mean, I, I'd much rather go, even though he's at 11 to 1 with Byron, than Chastain. I mean, Chastain hasn't done much here. Uh, and I wanted to point out those last three uh, results because just to let everybody kind of know that, because you got to do this with Chastain. That's. All, but sixth is good, don't get me wrong. But in general, that average finish has been pretty consistent, even with the new car. The new car, that average finish is a lot smaller, but it's still not where you want to see it if you want to take uh, Chastain this week. Look, you're getting 18 to 1, that's okay. But yeah, I, I just uh, I don't see it. And yes, 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 I'll say it again Ross Chastain has never led a lap in the Cup Series. At Bristol. Okay, uh, Austin Cendrick. Now, look, I'm going to give Austin another week. Uh, he was on my fantasy fantasy team. It still is because of a reason. I, I, I believe he can still rebound and put together a nice season. He did not qualify well last week, and that screwed him up because he got in a mess back there, and that's why you have to qualify well. You gotta, you're going to put yourself in harm's way. That's what happened to Cendrick last week. Um Look, he hasn't shown much so far in the Cup Series. I get it. But he has been impressive on this track before in the Xfinity Series. So he, he can do it here. And now that I believe that he's a better driver, I'm going to take him because he's 150 to 1. Now, if he was where I think he should be, I actually think he should be like 80 to 1. I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't take him. Maybe I would, but I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you. But 150 to 1, I just think that's completely disrespectful because I do not think he's the driver that we saw last year or pretty much so far in the Cup Series. I think that I, I still believe that at some point soon, and, and, and it has to happen on Sunday, at some point soon, we're going to start seeing some results from him pop up like we've already seen from, say, Gregson and um, Briscoe. Okay, uh, Austin Dillon, uh, he does not deserve uh, a mention here other than just to let you know that he has never led a lap at Bristol in the Cup Series, and he's only been in one top five in 17 appearances. We are going to pop up Chase Elliott, though, and look, I, I think it's great that Chase getting these big odds, especially at tracks where he's had success before, and I know things didn't go well for him in the second half of Sunday's race, but he hung around for the first half. And when you're driving a Chevy and you, you qualify well at Phoenix, you, th you think, think good things are going to happen. But for some reason, they didn't. Now, am I going to blame Elliott specifically? No, because Kyle Larson did nothing either. I mean, most of that team did nothing, which was a big surprise. So I can't really – it's not like Larson won the race and dominated and uh, William Byron was second. and you know, No, I mean, most of them struggled. So I'm willing to kind of forgive that. Keep in mind, if you take a look at Elliott here over his career, he's been pretty good. Uh, even his last two appearances have been strong. Look at the average finish. Now, I know he hasn't won here before, but, I mean, Elliott, if you, even if you go back to the Xfinity series, in 18 uh, races between the Xfinity and the Cup, he has 12 top 10s. And, he, and, and, and so he's been very consistent at this racetrack. You're getting a good number. And if you're going to keep giving me good numbers where Elliott has uh, in his history shown that he can race quality uh, laps at uh, and overalls I can give positive results at, um, I'm going to I'm going to throw some, some money on him and try to make uh, try to make uh, some, you know, kind of I don't know if we would say a long shot, but sleeper cash before that number drops. Gibbs, hi Gibbs, 13 to 1. Definitely Gibbs is one of those drivers I'm taking because uh, we talked about a few of them that I, I, I'm not in this group. But Gibbs I'm definitely going with. Uh, last year, he had a very strong showing, um, including the fact that he led 102 laps. It was one of his best races of the year last year as a rookie. 
in the Xfinity Series, you can see. He also led a 89 from the pole in one of those races. Uh, by the way, he crashed in that race and then was had a, an 11th place finish uh, the year before. So I also love the way he's trending. He's got three straight top 10s and two top fives on the year. So that's why I took him on my fantasy team. I think he's ready to get that first win and maybe two wins this season. And I think he's going to be competitive for sure on Sunday, which is why I'm definitely taking him. And here's Noah Gregson. We're going to pop up Noah Gregson. 65 to 1. Yes, it's his first cup race. And no, I don't think he's going to win. But look, I'm going to invest a couple of bucks. Just what the hell. Maybe he gets lucky. Because if you take a look there, the guy knows how to race at Bristol. And uh, he's also in a nice groove at this point. That's why I, I talked about him at the open of the show. He's got a couple of top 10s. He's got three top 12s. So this is the Noah Gregson we thought we were hoping we were getting last year. But, you know, just doesn't work out sometimes. And like I said at the open, I think now he, he, he you know, him and Briscoe and Gregson are trying to battle it out to be the man at Stuart Haas. Okay, what's... Uh, Let's go to Denny Hamlin. Let's go to one of those other favorites here. And Denny Hamlin will be one of the three favorites I'm going to take. So Hamlin, uh, I like the history, obviously. He's been very strong here over his career. He's led over 1,000 laps. Matter of fact, when he won last year, he led 142 laps. And uh, that was the last race in September uh, that, uh, the, uh, that, that, that they came to Bristol of course, on concrete. Also, take a look at Hamlin last year on the other tracks I talked about. Dover finished fifth, led 193 laps. That was the most of any driver in that race last year. Martinsville and Richmond, out of the four races combined on those other two short tracks, three of those were top fives. One of that, one of those was a runner-up. So all of those signs point to... And look, Denny Hamlin, he screwed it up last week. You know, I don't know, maybe... Uh, he should blame himself. And I don't know who he's going to blame. I mean, he, I guess he could have blamed someone else. But fact is, Denny Hamlin uh, really did not need to be overly aggressive. Uh, knocked him out of the race. Otherwise, I think he wins the race. So um, now, I think at least in a positive way, he's got some uh, aggression, uh, payback, I guess, to himself. Uh, hey, you know what? We're okay now. Uh, we had a good result. Now let's go out there and get a win, make up for what happened last week. Now the only issue is he's got to win two straight at Bristol, which is not easy to do. I get it. But he has won there three times. So um, to me, it's just about getting my money back. That's all I'm doing with Hamlin. I'm, I'm trying to hedge my bet, my $100 I get, to, I get to risk each week. All right. Let's move on over to Eric Jones. Now Eric... Uh, is down to 40 to one now, but again we had 50 to one yesterday, so um, that's where that's where we had the odds. Eric has performed better at uh, this track before. Uh, he's not in a good groove now there, but his history is solid with the four top fives. Matter of fact, um, you look at the combination of when he was in Xfinity first, he had those two wins there, the three poles. He goes to cup, uh, he, you know, first whatever, five or six races, he, he does most of those, all those four top fives. But the last several races, things haven't gone his way. And matter of fact, he hasn't let a lap the last five at Bristol. But you are getting 50 to one. It is a new year. It is the first short track of the year. So because of that, maybe something will change. And I want to take advantage of that 50 to one. Brad Kislowski, as I said before, I'm, Picking him this week, I know he's in a little, uh, you know, winning rut, but sooner or later he's going to notch the win, and I think this week is as good as a week as any. Another driver in that number range that I talked about, some of them I was going to pass because of some of them I was going to take. He's one of them I'm going with. Uh, he has the three career wins here, so he knows how to win. Matter of fact, just take a look at his last six. That includes two top fives. Uh, you know, he, he, I know he was fourth last week, but it wasn't like it was a great fourth. But it was, hey, you know what? Top five, what are you going to do? Busher also finished second. So that's a good sign for them coming into this race. Um, by the way, out of those last six, 
he led hundred he led four hundred and seven combined laps. That's sixty seven point eight laps led per over the last six. He was eighth at Dover last year and had two top tens at Richmond last year as well. So Keselowski, we are gonna take this week as one of our top drivers. Here's the other one. Well, here's the other top five car, and that is Kyle Larson. So Kyle Larson, uh, look, the num I just find the numbers though with Kyle uh, a little humorous. You know, it's it's like I don't, I don't know. I mean, why is he? Why is he is he down a four to one for a driver that's only won at this racetrack once in his career? Uh, that's just that's too low for me. Uh, yeah, look at it. His recent run: eight top tens out of nine. Five of those top fives, three of those runner-ups for the for just a one win. And if you take a look at how he's performed the other tracks, uh, win at Martinsville last year, win in Richmond last year. So okay, but but here's the, but again, we're always looking for warts on the, on the heavy favorites. And here's a couple of warts: did not have a good run at Dover last year. Um, only had one top five out of the four short tracks last year. And as I said, he's only won once in 15 races here. And I'm, I'm asked to be given up four to one. He's also just won recently, a few weeks ago. So we completely get it why he's one of the favorites, because he should be. He's led 86.6 laps per race over the last nine. That's 780 laps led over those nine races recently. And that's really all we care about Uh coming in here so four to one though i just can't do it I, I, a matter of fact i would probably go with bell and hamlin if, I, if, if you're going to ask me if i'm taking two drivers who would i take uh besides hamlin and i would i would take bell not not the odds i i just think that uh i don't know i i i it's kind of hard to, to to explain why i would do that as impressive these numbers are with larson but I don't know. Last week, not sure what happened there. That's that you know that that's probably why it is what it is. You know what had be done for me lately, and I know it happened fast. He just won the week before, um, and he could easily come back and win again this week, no question. But I don't know. I just kind of feel Hamlin and Bell would be the way I would go this week over Larson. Um, but that's just completely and utterly nitpicking. Okay, so. Um, I have absolutely no problem with anybody out there that wants to take him this week. Now let's go to Joey Logano because Logano has uh, been struggling. There's no doubt about that. And that's why he's 18-1. to 1. Who would have thought Joey Logano 18-1 to 1 at Bristol where he has two career wins. Uh, but here's the problem. Uh, this year, his average finish is 25.7. He does not have a top 10 in his last six races at Bristol. Last two races at Bristol, he crashed and he had suspension issues. Um... He did perform well in the short tracks last year, though. All four were in the top ten. Actually, all four were in the top seven, including a runner-up at Martinsville. But he also did not perform well at Dover. So a little bit too much on the negative side for Logano. And most importantly, most importantly, is what has been going on this season. Even though he's 18-1, to I have to pass. But if he qualifies well because he's 18-1, to maybe you'll get a decent number on him. Even though, you know, you're not going to get 18 to 1, but, you know, it's possible you'll still get a good price. Look, if it's ridiculous and, and he goes from like 18 to 1 to 5 to 1 because he qualifies like on the top two rows or, or, or wins the pole, then just forget it. Don't even take him. You've lost your chance. But, you know, if, if, if he's a strong qualifier and you can still get somewhere around 8 to 1, you know, 10 to 1, then yeah, grab him. But, I can't do it before qualifying at 18 to 1. Michael McDowell, 60 to 1. One of our long shot plays. And the the reason is staring at you right in front of your face. Look at that. In his first in, in 24 appearances, his average finish is 27.9. But in the last 5 races, including of course the last 3 with the new car, 13th. And his best finish ever, I believe it's his best finish ever, or it's one of his top 2 top 10s, uh, 6 last year. So because of that, I think he's a solid long shot play. Uh, what? Uh, by the way, Joe Nemechek, I think he's in this category. 
Nemechek. We're not going to pop him up on the screen. What do I have? Do I have Nemechek around here? Yes. Uh, Nemechek, uh, let's see. First cup race, three top fives out of four Xfinity Series races. Let's now move on to, we have three, a uh, few more drivers to go. Uh, Reddick at 13 to 1. Uh, another driver that we're going to pass on but, uh, because I don't think he should be 13 to 1. Uh, who knows? Maybe he's the Christopher Bell of this week. But look, he only has one top five. That's it. One top five out of five. And yes, I'm going to say it again. He's never led a lap in the Cup Series at Bristol. His average finish is not all that great. Last two races, not all that great. 15th and 25th. Now, he has shown, though, in the Xfinity Series, he can race here. 11th or better in all five races with a runner-up and a win. But I need to see something, including let's lead some laps this week first before I go down Reddick, uh, the Reddick train in the Cup Series on Sunday. Ricky Stenhouse, I think, is worth mentioning. I'm not going to pick him, but it's worth mentioning because the stat's pretty good. This is one of his best statistical racetracks, even though he's ever won here. So problem is, even though he was 10th last year, his last eight overall, including the 10th, the average finish is pretty bad. Daniel Suarez, only want to put him up here because of the fact that he's got a win already on the season. Um, but uh, this is not a good track for him. You know, his average finish, I mean, I think if he could finish in the top 15, I think that would be a success. Martin Truex Jr. Now, here's a, a 20 to 1, says it all. Anytime Martin Truex Jr. is 20 to 1, and usually it's a drafting race, um, you, you don't take him because it's because he's not good there. And uh, he's not. I mean, look at that. Two top, two top fives out of 33. He might have a better statistical uh, record on, on, uh, at Daytona or Talladega. The average finish is not that great. He did win in the Xfinity Series way back in 2004, but no reason to take Martin Truex Jr. this week. And Bubba Wallace is next. Bubba 40 to 1. Just one top 10. The average finish is not good. This is not the week to take Bubba Wallace. All right. Now, we're going to wrap it up with the uh, our, our overall picks. So let's see. Let me see where CJ. I got to remember to put this these picks here. So CJ, I got to write these down. So CJ's top picks are going to be Denny Hamlin and Ty Gibbs. He's supposed to give me a top three. I got to remind him of that. Oh, he, he's only giving me one long shot this week. Maybe that's what he got confused with. His long shot is Jones. So he's got Hamlin and Gibbs. And Jones, those are his, basically his top three this week. Uh, he's going with um, Hamlin and Gibbs. And I would guess that Hamlin would uh, then be his top play overall. Let's see. I didn't even think about my, my own top play. So let me go ahead and do that right now. So let's see. My top play, I'm going to say, yeah, you know what? I'm going to agree with, with CJ. I'm going to go with Denny Hamlin as my top play. Uh, my next two, boy, Gibbs is a good one, too. You know, I'm going to go ahead and I tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and do Kozlowski and Gibbs. So those would be my top three. So I'm going to agree with CJ with Hamlin and Gibbs. I'm going to throw Kozlowski in there and just missing out would be Blaney. And then my long shot. Uh, let's see. Look, Elliot's a long shot. So we have two long shots. So Elliot will be my my first one. And then the big long shot, uh, I will go with, you know what? I'm going to go ahead with Briscoe as my top big long shot at 60 to 1. All right, if you have any questions for me outside of what I've covered here on the show, you can let me know two ways. You can let me know in the comments section. Don't forget, well, you know because you're watching it right now on Prime Sports Network. Uh, we're flipping things around here this week. So this is available on Prime Sports Network. That's why I told you before, don't lose your subscription to Prime Sports Network. So we have Prime Sports Network uh, uh, early of the week. I'm going to do the race day it, it, where we edit it out a little bit if necessary, which I think we will. We'll edit it out and, and cut out some things and then just give you the meat of the show on uh, race day's uh, video. And um, But, uh, you know, besides commenting and asking questions, whatever, on YouTube, check out Discord, okay? Because that is the easiest way to communicate with me 
anytime you want about anything that's going on. We can have a quick rebuttal back and forth, much easier to do than on YouTube. Um, but we still want you to, to uh, comment and uh, ask away on YouTube because, hey, you know, the algorithms uh, help uh, boost up your traffic that way. Nothing happens on Discord. Discord is just an opportunity just, just for you guys. That's it. That's all we have Discord for is just for you guys uh, to um, you know to give you uh, an additional way to communicate with us. Um, and it does nothing for me at all financially, any way, shape or form. But, you know, we appreciate any way that you want to go about doing that. Um, and, yeah, let me know if you have anything that I haven't touched up on here, any questions that you want answers to. Um, because if I don't have answers to it, I'll, I'll, I'll ask the other guys and I'll try to find out what I can find out for you. So that's it. Bristol. Yeah, I should be saying, baby, I get it. I'm trying to be a, uh, you know, a rebel. So uh, we're going to go to Texas road course. We started our first road course of the season on Palm Sunday. That's the 24th of March. Uh, and then we round out this, the, the, the month on Easter on the 31st of March with richmond and that's a night race by the way our first uh, night race of the season so road course coming up next week richmond another short track coming up so we're going to a three-week stretch uh to end march with the short tracks the road course and the two short tracks and best of luck to everybody out there hopefully you're making some money even when i don't uh because cj uh I think he's hit on three out of four. That's what I try to tell you. Oh, I, you know, I haven't even shown my picks. I keep forgetting that. I could probably show the picks at the beginning of the at beginning of the of the, uh, um, of the video, so I won't forget. But let's see. Let me get the picks for you. Here are the picks. Oh, there they are. All right, those are the official picks. So you see, CJ's always got a little bit of a different way about it, where he doesn't mind going with the the heavy favorites. Uh, matter of fact, and he it doesn't really go with long shots much. So as you can see there, he only has one. I, I have five um, but because I'm always looking for the bigger payday that week. Uh, and I stay away from the heavy favorites. CJ will, will statistically have more winners than me during the year. Uh, but some years I will end up with more money than him uh, because I go for it a little bit more than he does. So we have completely different strategies. And I think that's great because it gives you two completely different perspectives. And there are the picks. Okay, so that's it. Again, let me know what you, what's on your mind. If you have anything on your mind, best of luck. Uh, and uh, not sure when we're going to do our first live show. Probably in a couple of weeks. I'm writing right now for our lads. Uh, I have two uh, uh, deadlines a year for the uh, NFL draft publication. One of them is up on the 20th, I believe, uh, in about a week. Nine days, so I don't have a whole lot of time, so I have to put all my time and effort, uh, my extra time and effort into the publication. So um, once my free time opens up, which will probably be at the end of the month, maybe even early April, maybe we'll pop up a, a live show. Maybe I can get CJ on a, as well uh, to sit in with me during one of those live shows. So thanks for tuning in. Best of luck on Sunday at Bristol, baby, and we'll see you next week.